Yakub Yusuf uh, from Jordan, speaking on the International Retinal Blastoma Comprehensive Course. Thank you, Yakub. And these are short three-minute talks now. If you have a question, maybe stand at the microphone. We'll have one only. Thank you. Okay, so I will take a chance to, in three minutes, to introduce the IRBCC for you. Unfortunately, there is still a huge disparity in survival for retinal blastoma between low-income and high-income countries. And as DD and maybe all of you showed in the global retinal blastoma study, children in low-income countries have 17 times more likely to die from retinal blastoma compared with that to those in high-income countries. And clearly, the main reason for that is delayed diagnosis. One of the reasons for the delayed treatment is lack of recognition by healthcare providers. Therefore, education may be helpful for very promising group. So this is why the IRPCC was initiated. The International Autoplastoma Comprehensive Course was designed to serve as a foundational element for ophthalmologists to acquire state-of-the-art knowledge and understanding of the autoplastoma. This was prepared by more than 50 international experts in autoplastoma from 23 countries in the world to provide detailed practical guidance for management of autoplastoma and this course may reduce the mortality and save vision for the eyes, and this course is totally for free. Now, the organizing and scientific committee worked hard over the past two years and a half with a team across the world, so I would like to acknowledge all the people who work with us in this big course. Actually, the, all the panel are in the office, and many of you are there. The concept here was, this course is unique because the content reflects the opinion of a team, and this content was approved by peer review, so it doesn't reflect personal opinion, but a team of experts' opinion. What you have to do if you want to look at this course, go to www.icancereducation.org or scan the card that you have in your tables. You have the QR code uh, there. Just scan it and go to the website. You create your account, put your username and password, and start the course. The course is 15 detailed modules around 12 to 13 hours. You can do it interrupted or continuous, it's up to you. At the end of the course, which not necessary to be in the same day, you have to do a, an exam. It is 40 MCQs. If you pass the test, you will get the certificate of completion. But remember, the IRVCC course is really a good education material that will help to teach the basis for retinal blastoma. However, this never replaces adequate hands on training for retinal blastoma. Thank you very much. That three minutes. Star Award. I don't see anyone at the microphone. Hands up quickly. Okay. Very nicely done. Thank you. Went to the eye with a report of 97 percent of success. Later on, a pioneer work of David Abramson together with Pierre Gobain, he's been raising a radiologist. They did a manipulation of the procedure and they directly entered the ophthalmic art using a microcatheter. They called their method super selective catheterization or chemoradiosurgery, chemosurgery. And they first uh, reported in 2006 on as a solid treatment for eyes that failed other treatment. And then in 2010 for eyes uh, that were primarily naive, primarily treated with the method. And in 2012, they published a 10 year treatment for uh, using uh, the method on both eyes in the same session. So if this is the Japanese way to uh, uh, use a balloon and uh, uh, obstruct the way to the brain, this is the New York way, using a microdetector entered in the intra to the heart of the brain. The rationale of the method is to deliver a lot of concentrated uh, drug uh, into the uh, eye locally without exposing the child to excessive systemic chemotherapy, something that we cannot achieve with the intravenous chemotherapy. And the indications are uh, uh, intraocular retinal blastoma with no evidence whatsoever of a sober involvement. Uh, primary treatment for naive eyes in most of the world usually uh, advanced cases, DOE, but some uh, centers use it on uh, less advanced cases. It could be used bilaterally and for secondary treatment for eyes that fail conventional treatment with systemic chemotherapy and uh, external beam radiotherapy. The most prevalent agents used are melphalan, usually 2.5 to 7.5 milligrams, uh, topidacal, 0.3 to 0.4 milligrams, and carboplatin, 15 to 30 milligrams. The selection of the dose 
and the number of ages, it depends on the patient age, the body weight, especially in young children, uh, especially when they are receiving bilaterally, it's very important, extent of the disease, presence or absence of uh, seeds, vitreous or some uh, retinal seeds, and the clinical effect of the first procedure. So, um, um, to do that procedure, you need to prepare a cooperation and integrative team, a cooperation with the team that includes you as an ocular oncologist, skin, neuroinvasive radiologist, pediatric anesthesiologist, pediatric oncologist, the pharmaceutics, and also some nurses. The procedure is performed under general anesthesia using the femoral artery as the guide usually, and here is our first procedure, and you can actually find in YouTube publications of the procedure done this uh, to date, and even a uh, recent uh, publication by the uh, New York group in 2023. Um, so uh, the majority of cases we enter through the internal carotid and directly to the ophthalmic, but approximately in 12% of patients the ophthalmic artery is not uh, accessible due to various reasons, uh, small size, puzzle, sometimes a steep uh, takeoff and the uh, alternative uh, anatomy. And the alternative anatomy could uh, be uh, addressed via external carotid circularization, circularization and middle meningeal artery. Here you can see the classical entry and these are the alternative entries uh, that could be used by the invasive radiologist. So the procedure, uh, right after the procedure, or t actually 10 days after the procedure, complete blood count should be taken uh, to uh, monitor male suppression, and ophthalmic examination should be performed three to four uh, weeks after to assess the uh, effectiveness of the treatment and to monitor toxicity. So what about the results? So as you can see, uh, starting from 2004 to uh, today, there are many, many publications, but let's go back because there is a learning curve. If we look at the classical results with external primary therapy for advanced disease, risk else was group uh, uh, 5, only 20 to 25% of eyes could be salvaged. And with classical chemo reduction, 47% uh, of eyes would need excess uh, uh, additional external primary therapy. And 53% of eyes, advanced eyes, will end up in, in nucleation. Looking at uh, midterm, I'm not. Uh, I didn't take results from today. I wanted to show how it looks after several years of practice. And uh, New York group uh, reported on 95 eyes of 78 patients, and their results for two years were excellent: 70% for all eyes, 81% for primary treated eyes, and 60% for eyes that were treated uh, a secondary to a failure. Just quickly, this is our case, and the E. D group, group D case, you can see the nice regression. This is uh, one of the cases published by uh, Abramson, group naive case. This is our case for salvage. This is a group EI that was treated with chemotherapy. After several months, we had a current that did not respond to uh, chemotherapy, and we did the uh, intraarterial chemotherapy, and uh, the response from the tumor standpoint was excellent, but you can see there is there are side effects, and this is the child. He's still keeping his eyes, and he's looking beautiful. So what are the main systemic side effects, just briefly, uh, sometimes hematoma at the entry point, and the most significant side, the systemic side effect is the significant neutropenia in up to 15% of patients, mostly when uh, the dosage is more than 0.4 mg per kilogram. The ocular side effects are uh, uh, variable, including periorbital edema and septic uh, cellulitis, and many vascular complications. But, as, as we know in medicine, nothing is uh, side effect free, so that, so is this procedure, but still, even with the side effect, intraarterial chemotherapy is an important mode of uh, treatment delivery. It offers a significant advantage to uh, advanced eyes or eyes that failed with uh, and recur with uh, other methods of uh, treatment. It is performed worldwide, including in Africa, and uh, we think that maybe in the long term this should be our mission to introduce and uh, to widely implicate this method in Africa. Thank you for your attention. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much for today. Africa for allowing us to come here. I'm uh, presenting results for breast of Uganda for 2022. It's 
I am Dr. Pire Ann. I am a pathologist with an inclination to obese and optical plastics, but also in optical oncology. And I'm presenting on behalf of Uganda with Dr. Retro, who is the pediatric oncologist, and Dr. Pius Mwaja, who is managing the retinoblastoma in another center in Uganda. I have no issues to disclose. Um, so as far as um, retinoblastoma was concerned, in Uganda we expected 120 um, new cases, but um, we have only two centers. We have the major one that has been around for a long time was Bokaro Eye Center and then Uganda Cancer Institute. So at Bokaro Eye Center, um, the unilateral retinoblastoma that was seen was 72. At UCI, we saw 15. And the bilaterals were 29. And uh, Ruhara saw the majority. And at UCI, we saw 25. So the total number of um, the eyes with retinal blastoma that we saw in 2022 were 143. And of these, majority, as usual, were seen at, at the Roharo Eye Center, about 120, and 23 were seen at UCI. UCI has been in existence for only around five years. Um, it's a cancer institute that is majorly handling all the other patients, but for the retinal blastomas, uh, it's still developed. It's just developing because uh, most of them used to go to Roharo Eye Center. Roharo Eye Center is in southwestern Uganda. And UCI is in the Kampala, in the Kampala at the center in the capital city. So it's just picking up. And so some of the statistics for Ohio Eye Center I wasn't able to get because they classify their information differently, which is different from what AMCC did. And so as far as the intraocular staging is concerned, at UCI we are seeing mostly advanced cases. So there was none of A, B, or C. So we only saw five in group, 15 in group D, and in group E we saw eight. So for all the cases that we got, of course, the same story for the staging. And if you look at our staging, it's only two that were in group one. We didn't have any in zero because there was no eye to save. They were all a bit advanced. Um, and like you see, the staging goes up to, five, up to stage five. So the number of nucleations for both UCI and, uh, and Roharo, we had 84. Um, that's the common treatment that we get for both. And the number of eyes treated conservatively, these were only at Roharo and they were 13. The number of children who received chemotherapy for more than two cycles, at least were 19. Uh, the number of patients who abandoned before starting treatment at UCI were eight. Before starting and after starting, there's a combination of those who started and those who didn't start at all. The number of patients who died during treatment, um, there were three at UCI and 24 at Roharo. The number of patients with progression of disease during tre treatment at UCI, that's where we managed to get some information, there were only two. And the ones for complete remission after treatment were three. So those are three out of the 18 new cases that we got. Um, that figure, I just wanted to emphasize that for this figure, if you looked, um, it's where it shows treatment was not started at all for five of the patients. They came in, we diagnosed them, but they just took off. They just could not tolerate everything because when we sent them to Cancer Institute, Cancer Institute is treating all the other cancers. So some of them just look at the other bad cases of the other cancer that just cannot be handled, and they just wait for it. So the key challenges we have are late presentation. Whether in Roharo or in UCI, the presentation is late. The abandonment is a key problem at the UCI. Loss to follow-up is another challenge. Um, Roharo has been... Um, advantage to get uh, some support that goes for following up 
for the patients up to their homes. They have funding to reach out to them up to their very homes. So that helps them to get all their patients continue with treatment. And for UCI, this is still a very big challenge because even just the phone calls, the other challenge we have with them is the patients give you a, a telephone number, the next time your call is not available, or it is not registered to the network, or it is a wrong number, and so you, you only rely on their telephone contacts. Because, and the other challenge, you know, Africa, I don't know whether it's common to the rest of Africa, people migrate from place to place. They will be in Kampala this month, next year they're in, in Barara, another year they're elsewhere. So there's no permanent residence, so you can't feel easy to follow them up. Lastly, there's limited supports, especially for the UCI uh, support, both for the institute, but also support from the parents, and uh, social, family social support is still a challenge. For some of them, they did come back because they didn't have social support. Either the relatives are telling them, how can you go there? You know this is good, you shouldn't go this way. Others will tell you, but who told you this is the right thing to do? How can you have a child's ID removed? So then at others, the mother has no support. The father is abandoning because they think this is a, a, a taboo, it's something abnormal that has happened to them. So there's still a big challenge, and I think it's common to many others about support. So, I want to lastly acknowledge AMCC for supporting us at the UCI. Last, last year we were reporting about challenges of not having um, laser, not having cryo, or being blessed with the machines. I, I Cancer Foundation we want to thank them for supporting us to be able to come through Shiba. And we want to thank you, Shiba, for allowing us to come and for training me. Thank you very much.